Voice Critical is and always has been one of the absolute worst individuals on YouTube. He's boring. His content is atrocious. You know, he's a trust fund kid who people love to prop up as some, like, voice of the people. Like, oh, Moist Critical, he's never wrong about anything. Like, again, he is the very stereotypical example of what is wrong with modern YouTubers, right? They don't have personality. They don't have uh, creativity. They don't make cool, interesting content. All they do is that they just sit there all day, every day, and just tell you the most basic, nonsensical, like, takes imaginable, right? <laughs> like, he'll sit there and tell you, oh, like, uh, that thing that happened today was pretty bad, right? For, like, eight minutes of this. And, like, for some reason, he gets, like, two million views. No. Absolutely not. Like, Moist Critical is and always has been a joke. And it is really cool, really great to see that he and Mr. Beast have been taken down a peg over the past couple of days. And what's more, it was for the same reason. Both of them tried to go full mask off and defend uh, tranny rapists, right? Both of them tried coming out and trying to say that, like, well, uh, uh, kids should be able to... Uh, mutilate their genitals and like uh, uh pedophiles should be allowed to rape children in fact i have a business where i allow the pedophile that i employ to do that right you know like they straight up like did this for years and uh, uh all of it's finally getting exposed to the point where it's become mainstream and uh both of them have had to take a break from from uh, making new content. You know, Mr. Beast is not going to recover from this, and uh, Charlie is not going to recover from this. Especially Charlie, because he's not, like... My understanding of it is that he's not attached to, like, a major corporation the, the way Mr. Beast is. So, uh, th that's another thing about Mr. Beast that I don't think most people realize, is that, like, he's very much a corporate YouTuber, right? He's not an individual, like, make, uh, using all of his resources to do all these things. Like, all of it is fake, right? It is... A corporate stunt to make the perfect face for YouTube, right? There is no real enthusiasm for Mr. Beast. He is entirely famous for being famous, right? You know, with PewDiePie, you have like a very clear like um like series of events that led him to like becoming like the dominant force on YouTube for a decade. But like Mr. Beast is just just exists because you know entire industries have cropped up around the uh, the YouTube sphere now, right? And uh, you know Charlie is a bit more of the the old guard where it's like you know nepotistic, uh, you know uh, hanging out with my friends like well into my thirties kind of like uh, personality, you know rich kid like thing, right? Like more like classic YouTube, but like it all comes down to the same thing, right? Where like they will do everything they possibly can to protect specific targets, to protect, like, uh, you know, social, uh, specific social causes, uh, specific political agendas, uh, specific ideas, while, like, condemning others, right? Like, I haven't talked about Moist Critical a lot, but, like, the times I have seen him, he's uh, making all these weird statements about, like, uh, you know, Nintendo and the Super Smash Bros. community, and, like, I have my own opinion on that, but, like, his takes were clearly manipulative, right? His takes were clearly delusional and, like, ridiculously pro-professional scene, right? Like, again, the uh, the Smash Bros. community do not own the Smash Bros. IP. They cannot utilize it the way that they wish to utilize it, right? And again, like, because of people like that, we've gone through, like, about a decade of uh, Super Smash Bros. being the most popular fighting game in the world by far, and it's still not commonly acknowledged because, like, oh, but but the FGC, like, I don't care about the FGC. But, um, again, that's just one example of, like, what's wrong with Moist Critical. Obviously, obviously, I've had this individual blocked on YouTube for a long time. I will never watch any of his content. I don't care what he says. Uh, what I do care about, though, is, like, People who do watch him and do care about him and make threats against me for uh, speaking out about, like, his behavior and things he said in the past, right? I have been threatened 
because I've criticized Moist Critical in the past, right? This isn't anything new. I have a, I don't know if I've ever like acknowledged this openly, like given a, a public statements about it, but like I feel as if like um, the YouTube like uh, royalty, like the elite, like they really should not be allowed to exist, right? Like that is not something that should have happened ever. And yet that's perfectly normal for like the, the most critical audience. Right. They'll seriously sit there and try to tell, uh, try to convince themselves that like that was justified and that was reasonable. Like, oh, uh, Moist Critical is going to destroy you. Like when he makes a video about you, man, your your life is going to be over. Yeah. As if. It was a it was a complete joke then, uh, a complete joke now. But seeing like a, seeing this, that the chickens finally come home to roost, you know, people begin to realize that, like, this guy is not what he seems to be, you know, uh, beginning to, to pull back the curtain a little bit and revealing the Wizard of Oz. It's just an old, pathetic man-child behind a curtain, right? Like, seeing this happen is really exciting because it shows what I've been saying for the longest time in regards to, like, uh, gaming YouTubers and uh, the YouTube culture community in general. Like, these people are in no way, shape, or form influencing the youth, right? You know, I grew up during a period where, like, uh, every media outlet, every independent journalist, every uh, gaming YouTuber was, like, religiously attacking Nintendo, you know, demonizing motion controls, demonizing the new Super Mario Bros. games, you know, hating on the Wii and DS, the most successful video game console of all time, right? You know, I grew up in that period. Like, no, this stuff is the worst stuff ever. Like, oh, uh... Like, again, that was normal at the time. And, uh, you know, uh, all this time later, you know, 20, 15, 10 years later, like, uh, that behavior has completely eroded and just completely collapsed around itself, right? When you see people try to speak down to Nintendo, uh, talk down to Nintendo now, like, it just falls on deaf ears, right? Like, every time someone complains about Famicom Detective Club, you're just like, well, just don't buy it then, you know? Like, Again, you have plenty of other options. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Nintendo is putting out a new Metroid or Fire Emblem. I, I don't. Stop. You are embarrassing yourself. Uh, and I, uh, I do think this is going to be the trend going forward. And like, uh, the brutal reality that the establishment is going to learn is that like, uh, people are simply going to move on from e celebs. The moment they stop being convenient, right? So the instant that, like, Mr. Beast isn't, like, some big, big, like, deal on YouTube, people are going to stop watching. The instant Charlie gets involved in a controversy, people are going to stop watching. And uh, they'll move on to the next shiny thing. And uh, as it so happens, the next shiny thing will also be old and dusted and also won't change anyone's mind or manipulate anyone's opinions. Right. Like, again, it seems to me it's becoming apparent that like, uh, this style of trying to propaga uh, propagandize the youth through like, uh, YouTubers and brands, like it is a complete and utter failure. And this is just one example. Why more and more people are pushing back against the trans agenda and even titans like Mr. Beast cannot stand up to what's coming.